for minutes because you didn't say it right the first time. Because <laughs> <No. laughs> I didn't say it right the first time. I, I, my baby says, my new rule is, brothers, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but it's what it is, is what it is. Yeah, all right. Men are always wrong, rule number one. Rule number two, women are always right. <laughs> if any doubt, if in doubt, see rule number one. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> so, the devil can't get straight at us if we have an angel that's protecting us. So, he has to try to come around. So, he's shooting flaming arrows. He's not trying to take you out because he can't take you out unless he gets permission from God. Remember, Joe? Yes. Right. He had to get permission to do everything he did to Joe, right? Yes, he did. Joe, y'all remember this now. Joe was minding his own business, just doing what Joe does. God was bragging to the devil about Joe. I know some of you say, God, don't brag about me. <laughs> Lord, no. I, I, I can do without you bragging about me. Brag about Reverend M or somebody else. Don't, don't brag about me. But God was bragging about Joe, and so the devil said, you know what? And this is my language. You can brag all you want. You got a hedge built around them. I can't get through it. All right? I can't, I can't get through it. My demons can't get through it. Your bragging is in vain. And God says, oh, that's what you think. <laughs> so he gives the devil the limit. He takes that hedge out. He gives him the limit. Now, don't you know, the very first person that the, the devil would have taken out, if he could have, and this goes into something else. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll talk about that another time. Would have been his wife, not the children. Mm -hmm. Would have been his wife. No. It would have been his wife, but he couldn't deal with the wife. Why? Because the two of them were what? One. One. Boy, Lord have mercy. We get so many lessons tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so he went to the next best area, which was his children. Ooh, and not only am I gonna get your children, but I'm gonna take out all your wealth because Job was wealth. I'm going to take out every, all your material wealth. And at this point, God hadn't given him time to touch Job, so Job wasn't sick. Job was in good health. But mentally, Job is messed up because he's, not only has he lost everything, I can imagine you can say, I can lose everything. I can get that back. I can plant some more stuff. I can get some more cash. But not only I lost everything and my children at the same time. Not only that, what we, what we discount is, Joe might have made it through that. But he had a wife <laughs> that was going to remind him that they had lost everything. Her security come from who? So her security is gone. All her babies are gone. So Job has to deal with his wife, his wife being upset. And then, as if that wasn't enough, the devil came back and said, oh, 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 only reason that he even stood because you didn't let me touch him. As if dealing with your wife wasn't enough. And so God gives him permission then to touch him, but he can't take his soul. So in other words, you can't kill him. You can affect his body, but you can't kill him. So when we look at that and see how that relates to us, you have an angel that's protecting you. The devil can't take you out unless God gives him permission. So since he can't take you out, he's shooting flaming arrows. And so when he can set your tongue on fire, when he can set your spouse's tongue on fire, when he can set somebody in your job's tongue on fire or set something in their life on fire and let that fire consume you because you don't have your shield up to do what? Cleanse. Not even quench. Extinguish. Yeah, see, see, King James says quench, but he said, this says extinguish. In other words, when you put your shield of faith up, when you put your belief and your trust in God into action, it extinguishes mm. his flaming arrows. Mm -hmm. Boy, ain't that good news? Mm -hmm. All right, so, 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 extinguish the arrows of the evil one. 
Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is what? God's word. The helmet of salvation. What is the head? The helmet can protect. Your mind. Your Okay. Notice that this piece of the armor is protecting your head. And what he tells us protects that is what? Our what? Our salvation. Our salvation. Now how do we get salvation? It's a gift from God by accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior. Okay, so in order for us to be able to put on the armor, we have to be saved. We have to have salvation. But under, an ex under our salvation, knowing what our salvation is, is what protects our mind. Okay? And our mind is, that's where our, our ear gates are. That's where our eye gates are. Where, 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 where we, we determine what we're going to look at. Where we determine what we're going to hear. It's also within this area where the helmet is at, although it's not here, it's protecting the back, it's protecting our mouth gate. So it protects what we project out. All of that comes from, when we put in this armor on, that helmet comes from our salvation in God. And so if we don't understand when I ask you, how do you know you're saved a few uh, Wednesdays ago? If you don't understand your salvation, you can't put the helmet on. If you don't know how you saved when somebody asks you how you saved, how can you put the helmet of salvation on? You can't. And if you don't have the help of the salvation on, then your eye gates are unprotected. Your ear gates are unprotected. Your mouth gates, you like to say anything out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. And so we have to understand our salvation. All right? And we go into some churches that would say this is apostasy to say once saved, always saved. Well, how many times can you get saved from drowning? We talk about that one time. However, if we are saved, we are going to worship God. We are going to serve him, and we don't have to deal with this whole thing, well, you just get saved, uh, and, and, and because you're saved, then you go out and do whatever you want. No. You missed something. All right? When we get salvation, we receive the Holy Spirit. Now, something that said, was said last night for those that went, which I don't agree with. Once you're saved, the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit. How you allow the Holy Spirit in, in your life is up to you. But you have the Holy Spirit. You, you don't have to go get something else. Once you're saved, God places His Spirit inside of you. It's up to you then to listen to the Holy Spirit inside of you and allow more of the Spirit to, to, to manifest in your life than you do of your flesh. But it's, so I needed to correct that. I'm glad we did. What was so, said? I wasn't there. What was said? Something to the fact that, that salvation wasn't enough, that getting the Holy Spirit was a whole different, whole different thing. So I just I'm just clearing that up. You know, I like when we go someplace, we, we clear those things. When you're saved, according to the scriptures, you receive the Holy Spirit. So it's in the sword of the Spirit, which is the sword. Notice that's the only offensive piece of the armor. All right? That's the only thing that we could say that, that in the armor that we have to fight with. But notice what it is. Our offensive piece is God's word. So where does that offensive piece come from? God. How do we use it? By speaking. Oh, no, talk to me, talk to me. By speaking. I mean, you're not going to know what the Bible how, how, do, how do you use the I sword? To be quiet. But this right here, I keep with you all the time. Okay. That's how it comes. How do you use the sword? Pray. Read. If this is the sword, how do you use it? How did Jesus use it in the garden? He got to use your mouth. Somebody say my mouth. My mouth. I said speak it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, all of us got to get it. If, if one of us don't get it, none of us get it. We all got to get it. Say use my mouth. Use my mouth. So when we in a battle against the devil, all right, we don't fight the battle. We stand our ground with the armor of God on. And what we do is we have to speak the word of God. Don't care who around. The devil's around. So now we're going to speak the word of God. No, I'm talking, people look at you like you're crazy sometimes. You got to speak yeah. the word of God. I, I, it don't matter. I, I do. 
come crazy. Work. I don't mm -hmm. care. You still, you, you have, have to, to speak in your husband and your wife. You got to speak the word of God. The problem is we don't want to speak the word of God because what gets spoke to us is not the word. It's the flaming arrows that are coming and we want to send some more flaming arrows back. But our job, what the Bible says, according to Paul and what he told the Ephesians is, that stand your ground, get, get, get set, and then speak the word of God. Amen. But we have to know the word in order to speak it. If you don't know the word, you can't speak it. Amen. So when you know the word, and you recognize the tactics of the devil, then you know what word to use. And so you speak it. No matter who's around. President can be around, but if you got to speak the word of God, you speak it. I don't care who's around, really. Me, I'm just saying, but people think you're crazy when you speak it. And who cares what people think? Well, then, I know, because if you sit there and get the private the trial, they're not getting let me, let, let me tell you something. Sitting in the shelter in Afghanistan when the bombs coming over, <laughs> and I'm dived up under the desk. I don't care what anybody thought at that point in time. Start speaking. Who cares what anybody's thinking? I started praying. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. At some point, you have to to, to realize you have to. What I say, you've got to transition from the flesh. To the spirit. To the spirit. And when you transition from the flesh to the spirit, if you understand that my power is not in my flesh, I don't care how big or muscle bound you are, how much power you have, what type how how strong of a grip you have in the spiritual realm, all of that means absolutely nothing. So the only power we have in the spiritual realm is using the word of God. And so what he's saying is once you've prepared, you've done your homework, you read your Bible, you fasted, you prayed. You know, you've memorized the word so that you know the word. When you get, when you take your stand, because and you've got your helmet of salvation, you know that you belong to God and that you are saved by God. When you have that shield of faith, I'm putting my belief and my trust in God in action. Okay, you're really not holding the shield. It's a spiritual shield. I'm putting my belief and my faith in God in action, and I'm going to speak the word. And I expect when I speak the word that God's going to do what God said that he would do. Thank you. And that's when you get over being scared. You get over being, being oh, what they going to think I'm on my job. Who cares? Are they going to fire you because you spoke the word? You don't have to talk as loud as I'm talking, but you speak the word. Father God, in the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Hallelujah. Every time they rise against me, judgment, I should condemn. I hear about it every time. So we have, to, we have to then learn how then to, to, but I'm telling you, it's easy for us to talk about it tonight. But you tell me next week, next week come tell me how easy it was for you when, when the devil shot them down, them fire up. How easy it was for you to speak the word. Because you got to get past the flesh. Amen. I got to get past the flesh. No, my wife called me. And she said, "What kind of man you think you are?" I want to tell her how man I think I am. You know? Instead of in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you know? Oh, and and, and, oh, and let's, let's just be honest. I feel you, right? Or or it's vice versa. You know? She called me, and I'm saying. Oh, God, what kind of wife do you mean? Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I mean, you can call on Jesus all you want. I don't care. I mean, that's that's life. Am I right? That's, that's, that's real life. And so what you have to do then, because what happens now, now you would just extinguish one dark. But you think the devil going to stop? You don't think he got more? He goes to the other. That one, I don't care about you calling Jesus. So then you come right back. With the word. Because God, you extinguish one dark. I know where your homework is at, so so you don't have to to uh to to, to assume that I've missed it. So your homework is you're gonna explain preparation. But before we get to preparation, we're gonna go back and look at this is from the New Jerusalem Bible. Um and it actually gives us a different perspective of the scripture.
at least it gives me a different perspective of the scripture. And we'll bring out some highlights on that. So we've gone through this part already. Finally, and, and, and what, what we have here again is one of the things that we need to keep in, in, in mind, no matter what scripture that we read, is that when the scriptures were originally wrote, they were wrote on pyrus, they were wrote on, on, on scrolls, is that they did not have the punctuation that, that, that we have. That, that we get in our Bibles, and they weren't both, so they weren't broke up in chapters and verses. They were letters, and so you know how when you write a letter, you just write. You know, and a lot of times when we, if we're really passionate about writing letters, we don't even put punctuation in. We just keep writing until we get to the end of it, and 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 and, and we sign it. And so we, if you keep in mind that that that. This letter to the church at Ephesus, it didn't have all of these punctuation marks and these chapters and these verses. So Paul says finally, so in other words, what that is, that's a transition. He's, he's, he's told us some things, and he gets and says finally, be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. And if someone get this for the King James for me, so we can look at a comparison. Finally, my brethren, be strong, strong in the Lord and in the, power. and in the power of his might. Okay, so so King James says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And so that almost sounds like the, the strength part is on us in, in, at the beginning. All right, where we look at here, it says, Be strengthened by the Lord. Diff Different mindset. That, that tells me automatically up front that I'm getting my strength from the Lord. I don't have to worry about having, having that strength myself. So be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. So it's none of my strength when we look at it from here. It's all his strength. So be strengthened by him. And when you, while you're being strengthened by him, realize that he has all the strength that you need. Right? So, so that would be more encouraging to me than finding my brother and be strong in the Lord. Because sometimes, let's be honest, we have moments where we're not strong. We have moments where we, we, we are weak in our spiritual walk. All right? So understanding that I don't have to be strong because all of the strength is going to come from God. What my job is is to surrender to him. Like Sunday we talked about. Tie those shoes for, 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 our, for our children when they're young and don't know how to do it. They don't have to tie the shoe. They don't have to put it in a knot. All they have to do is surrender to the parent and allow the parent to do it. But when they try to do it on their own, that's when things get messed up. Or if they're trying to tie it with you, if the knot doesn't get tied as tight or as efficiently as it should because you're trying to fumble with their fingers and fumble with the string and because they put their two cent in, <laughs> it doesn't get done the way it's supposed to be. And so it's the same thing. When we try to put our two cent in, the job doesn't get done the way it's supposed to. But again, we have a consolation. And I love it. Romans 8 28. Somehow God still makes it work out. But we may have to deal with some things while we're getting to that point. So finally, be strong, be strengthened by the Lord in the vast strength. Put on the full arm of God. And the reason you need to put it on is so that you can stand against the tactics of the devil. Okay, one of the things that we're going to talk about to, to, tonight are these tactics. When we look at the book, one of the things that Tony Evans is going to talk about is the tactics. He's going to look at it from the perspective of a football game where Football players watch tapes of the team that they're going to play so that they can, 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 can see where their vulnerabilities are and attempt to take advantage of it. The only issue with that is, is that the opposing team does the, same thing. the exact same thing. So it becomes a matter of who paid the closest attention and who is more e effective at uh, uh, manipulating and taking advantages of the weakness of, of the other team. So, he says, we're going to put on the full armor of God. And the reason we need to put on his full armor is so that we can stand against the tactics of the devil. Now, it said, did it say fight against the tactics of the devil? 
Huh? Did it even say that we can win against the tactics of the devil? Huh? <coughs> it said so that we can stand against. What I just said a minute ago. If we're standing, it means we're not fighting. The issue with too many of us as Christians is we want to fight our own battle. Paul is not telling the Ephesians to fight this. He's telling them to, to stand. So stand against the tactics of the devil. For your battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities. Now, what did we say about that last week? Rules and authorities. <coughs> okay. Oftentimes when we read this, we, we get to against the world powers of this darkness and against spiritual forces in, in, in high places or in heavenly places. And we look at the whole thing as strictly spiritual in the spiritual realm. Okay? That's not exactly what Paul is saying. He says, rulers and authorities, those are people who are on earth. But those are people who are being influenced by a spirit. So, so when he says flesh and blood... When, when he says we don't fight against flesh and blood, a lot of times we say, okay, we're not fighting against the person, but we still see people. So what he's saying here is, even the people that you see, the rulers and the and 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 uh, the authorities uh, that you see are the fight really isn't against them in the flesh, but it's against them. Spiritual. In the spiritual realm. <coughs> so if it's against them in the spiritual realm, what does that mean? That's what we have to fight. We got to fight from the spiritual side. So 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 how does that look? What does that look like in a household? Prayer. <laughs> What's that? Prayer. 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 Mm -hmm. Study. Study. Mm -hmm. Before we get to the prayer, before we get to the study, get, get, what, what would a scenario look like in a, in a normal household? Oh. Oh. Yes. Any, any examples? We can use Monday night. <laughs> Monday night. <laughs> All right, yeah, there's an issue comes up between a parent and a child, and words are exchanged, mm -hmm. and it becomes personal before it becomes. Well, not before it becomes spiritual, because it is spiritual. It becomes first before we recognize mm -hmm. that it's spiritual. All right? Husbands and wives. All right? You were having a great day, and all of a sudden, you start to argue about something. Mm -hmm. Okay? And before you know it, you <coughs> run at each other, boom, 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 blow for blow. <coughs> hurting each other, saying things you really don't mean, because you're dealing with the natural realm, mm -hmm. not realizing that... The whole thing started in the spiritual realm. And so what we have to learn how to do then in this tactics part is talking about is, is being able to recognize the devil when he comes and recognize when we're dealing with spiritual warfare so that we can deal with it in the spiritual realm. Because if we don't, it can get so far escalated that you start to beat each other up verbally, and then you actually start to beat each other up physically. All right, and 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 still don't realize that it wasn't the, it was the devil until somebody's at the hospital, and then you're sitting there realizing, oh, we let the devil take advantage of us. All right, and so so rulers and authorities, we have to deal with rulers and authorities. It's some, something that that I'm sure all of us are aware of. When, when you look at these Trump rallies, you're dealing with rulers and, uh, and authorities. And that's definitely in the spiritual realm. So, so what we need to understand then is that while we're not going to fight flesh and blood, flesh and blood can be influenced in the spiritual realm. All right? So he moves from, from those who are being influenced in the spiritual realm until he moves actually to the spiritual realm. He says against world powers. All right. Now, in that world power, we got we have both. We have the actual world powers, but we also have the 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 spiritual influence on those world powers. We also have what we call a worldview. 
All right, and when we look at that worldview, that's something we can't touch, but that's something that is very real. That operates in the spiritual realm. So he says, world powers of this darkness against spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. All right, and so when we look at that, what he said is in that spiritual realm, and he says in the heavens, he said a lot of folks have problems with that, but where did the demons originally come from? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They came from heaven. They're, 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 they're one third of, 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 of the angels, which we call fallen angels. And so here, when you run into people who, who want to believe in heaven and angels, but don't want to believe in hell, there's a problem. All right? Because without heaven, there would be, there, there would be no hell, and without heaven, there would be no demons. They will all still be angels. And without that, we wouldn't have to worry about this spiritual warfare. But since the devil was a spirit and he was an angel, he and he failed, he took a third of the angels with him. Now we have to deal with this spiritual warfare. And when we deal with it, we must understand if we have an angel that's assigned to us, and this is the ideology that many Christians have, is that each of us, every Christian has an angel assigned to them, then it would, would stand to reason that if God assigns an angel to us, the devil would assign a demon to us. And so that if you understand that, then there's a constant spiritual warfare going on in the spiritual realm for every born again believer. Constantly going on. All right? And if we don't accept that, some folks don't want to talk about the spiritual realm because it's spooky. But you know what I don't understand? Can I go off on a tangent for a moment? Uh, what I don't understand is that Christian folk who, who, who don't want to deal with the realness of the spiritual realm of demons and angels, but they watch horror movies and get nightmares from watching all the crazy stuff that Hollywood comes up with. All right? And the, 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 the bigger part of that is Hollywood makes demons scare you. But the, the scripture tell us that if we were to look at Satan, all right, that, that men would have to admit that he's handsome and the women would just be flabbergasted. All right? But you don't see Hollywood portrayed him in that way. All right? And so, move on, short tag. Powers of this darkness, your spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. And so that's in, in the heavenly realm. Paul says, this is why you must take up the full armor of God. This is the second time he's told us to put on the full armor, and he's telling us why we have to put on the armor. He says, so second time, this is why we must take up the full armor of God. Now, why do you think he didn't just say the armor of God? He said full both times. Because you need everything. Okay. Because... What he's telling us we need to put on, we need all of it. All right? So he says, so that you may be able to resist. Did he say fight? No. Nope. All right? So first time he said that we'll be able to what? Stand. stand. We'll be able to stand. And the second time he says that we'll be able to resist. resist. Do, you, do, you, do you understand how... how some of these songs and the ideology that we've come up in some of these our churches get us messed up because they they give us the impression that we can go toe to toe with the devil and win. I'm gonna stop the devil's head. I mean, I've been in churches where they tell everybody stop the devil's head and everybody did just to stop. <laughs> and in the spiritual realm, the devil just laughing at us like you know. The only reason that the devil doesn't have his way with Christians and bang you all up against the wall and lift you up out of your bed and out of your chair and, and, and almost give you a heart attack and not give you a heart attack is because God has an angel that's protecting you. All right? And so when we understand that, then we don't underestimate our enemy. And then we understand that in order for us to stand against the enemy, what we have to do is like what little Carson would have to do if he had to fight me. All right? If he had to fight me, even as small as I am, all right, 
He can't win. But if he stands back, he can't even stand up. So, so if he sits in his mama's arms and say, Dad, 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 and Daddy does all the fighting, then he will win the battle because his daddy does the fighting for him. And that's what we as Christians have to understand is that God has angels that fight for us. But our position is to stand. You remember uh, 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 Moses when, when he was old and, and, and he had Joshua on one side and Caleb on, on, yeah. on, on the other side. And as they held his arms up, the Israelites would win. And when they let his arms fall, how many blows did Moses throw? None. Absolutely zero. His job was to keep arms uplifted to God. And as he kept his arms uplifted to God, God gave Israel victory. When his arms weren't lifted to God, now, I don't know if you paid, really paid attention to that. Because it almost would say, well, God, if you want them to win, what does it matter whether Moses' arms are up or whether his arms are down? If you want your children to win, they should win. But there's a spiritual significance in that is why... Moses' arms were lifted to God to say, it's not Moses who's winning this. Okay. And it says to the children of Israel, it's not Moses who's doing this. It's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now keep that in mind because we're going to come back to that. So he says that you'll be able to resist in the evil day. We talked about the evil day last week. Evil day could be the, 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 when the Antichrist comes. Tony Evans suggested the evil day is any day that the devil attacks you. <laughs> All right? And, and there's some truth to that. Any day that the devil attacks you, that's an evil day. And you need to use, you need to have your spiritual armor on, and you need to allow the, God's angels to fight for you. What happens is we get influenced by the devil. We, somebody say me. 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 Yeah, so, so, so it's personal. We, me, get influenced by the devil. Somebody else gets influenced by the devil. And the devil sticks back and laughs because he gets the two of us going against each other. And then he don't have to do anything. He ain't have to use any of his spiritual powers because we tear each other up in the, in the physical realm. So he says, put it on that you'll be able to, to resist in the evil day. And here's where our homework is. And having prepared everything. Now, what does it mean to prepare everything? Having prepared everything, he says, to take your stand. So what does that mean? Having prepared everything to take our stand. He's, he's told us twice, to, well, he told us to stand, right? He told us to resist. And the King James Version, read it again for me, please. Sister, sister uh, who which one? King James, the, the very first. Find my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Keep going. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and have having done all to stand. Yes, listen to that. Say it again. Having done all to stand. Uh -huh. Stand therefore. Okay, stop. Okay. King James says, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. All right. What does that sound like Paul is saying? Yeah, I'm not fighting. I'm, I'm, I'm standing. Okay. It's like if, he, if God said put on the whole armor to put on everything that would prepare ourselves like that to stand by <clears throat> by um, this, this, the word of God, the shield of faith, um, the gospel of peace, the, the belt of truth. After we done done all those things, then we could stand strong in the Lord and let him fight our battle. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, 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 from the King James, not from this one. 
King James, having done all to stand, stand therefore. What does it, what does it sound like? That even when you think that you can't stand any longer, you still have to stand. That may help us on the way. Okay. When, you, when you give it to the Lord, you give it to him and leave it there. Now, how about this? Having done all to stand, who does it sound like is in control right now? Turn it over to God. Us. Okay. Oh, ahead. Having done all to stand, who's doing the stand? We are. So it sounds like at that point, the standing is on me, right? So he says, having done all to stand, stand therefore, which almost makes it seem like that there is a grave responsibility on me. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, I, 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 I want to make sure. All right? When we look at it from this perspective, it says, and having prepared everything to take the stand. So this, uh, I haven't stood yet, have I? This says that there's some preparation that I need to do. When we look at it from the King James, it says, and having an all, it sounds like I'm already there standing. I'm, I'm, I'm already in the battle. This says, before you go to take the stand, there's some preparation that has to take place. All right? And that's what we want to talk about. Your homework was to, 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 to discover what is that preparation that we have to do before we say it. Look, Pastor, in King James when it says, and having done all, isn't that talking about the preparation? It depends on how you look at it. Because I didn't I looked at it like how she said, not mm -hmm. by what she said. Right. Okay. It all, it all depends on how, how you look at it. Because when he says, having done all to stand, you can take it that you're already standing in position. Okay? Where, which it almost sounds like, and I think a lot of the ways that we've heard it preach, it sounds like you, you're standing already, and the devil hits you, but don't fall, just keep on standing. All right? What we look at it now from a different perspective is, is before you take the stand, there's some preparation that needs to take place. All right? Because what's going to happen is, what our job is, and you get me ahead of where I want to go, but what our job is, when, when we talk about the shoes, okay, that the shoes that they wore, and I don't want to do a whole lot about the, the armor that, 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 that the Romans wore, because that's where, where our focus is, but what we need to know about it is that they had, they were like spikes on the bottom of them. Because in the Middle Eastern areas, there's a lot of sand, all right? And those spikes were so that you could get a firm stand. The football players wear spikes so that they can get grip in the ground. And so that they can, 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 they can maneuver, or if they're blocking, they, 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 they've got a good stand in order to block. So when he says, prepare to stand, he said, the stance that we're going to get in with the full armor is the stance that we need to be in in order to resist the devil. What's that? The word of God. Right? We're gonna get into that, Miss Jay. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get there. All right. So so, what is this preparation? Can let me ask this question for you? So everybody, everybody knows what a civil war is, right? If, 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 if you looked at the news tonight and they said in, in light of the recent Belgium attacks and the previous war on terror, that we expect that the United States within a week's time will be in civil war and martial law. There will be no flights out of the country. The borders to Mexico and to Canada have been sealed off. So what do you do? I know you're going to pray. 
prepare. But, but what are you gonna do besides prayer? You said prepare. How are you gonna how do you prepare? I'm in a, in a prayerfully. <laughs> if somebody ever attack me, I'm gonna, be, I'm, I'm gonna be getting some weapons. Okay, all right, all right. What else are we gonna get? You gonna get something to protect yourself with? What else are we gonna get? Food. Food. All right. Anything else? Water. Water. Food. Shelter. Some water. hiding place. Cause I'm mad. Some place. <laughs> get you a better, a better shelter. In other words, you understand that there's a time of chaos and possible war and violence coming, you're going to prepare yourself for what you would consider the worst chaos and the worst violence to the best of your ability based off of what information you have now on what you might need. Okay? Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. So, if we understand that preparation, then what, Paul, what is Paul saying? Having having prepared everything to take your stand. So he's saying, you haven't stood yet. Mm -hmm. Having prepared to get in the stance that you need to be in to deal with spiritual warfare, what does that mean? Because I was admit, if we don't know what it means to prepare for it, we can't prepare for it. And if we don't prepare for it, then that would be an indication then that uh, if we don't know how to prepare for it, that the devil's been having his way. And he really hasn't had to say um, nothing but his his private, maybe his trainees out, because he hasn't had to spend send a lot of force to take it to, to deal with us. But we don't even know how to prepare this to, to even take the stand that we need to be in to resist him. Okay, so I don't think uh, I got I took my I got to change my clothes, put my hair up, and grease my face, and got my weapons together. I'm ready to fight. Okay. I mean, that, I mean, we talking about a physical fight, but I'm just saying, like, that's that's my preparation to fight. And so after I done done all that, then I'm ready to I'm I'm ready to stand there and, and take what's coming. Okay, uh, I remember that. I got that. Okay. I got that. In order to prepare for, like you said, you still got to recognize what you're dealing with. You got to recognize the issue at hand. You got to recognize what you get ready to go into battle for or with. I think you got to identify it first. You got to okay. know what you. Uh, 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 I think I think uh, Paul was saying that that first verse that you had there. You must put on the full armor of God. That you prepare then to resist anything that's coming your way. Okay. So you said put on the whole armor. She, she's breathing her face and, and pulling her hair back. <laughs> <laughs> take the earrings off. Take the, take the earrings off. Okay, now, now for, some, for, for some of us who've been in the military, see, we know we got to have food. Sending the wife out to get the food and, 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 the, and the water. And then you got to determine what kind of food it is. Because you, know, you, you expect that the grocery stores are, 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 are eventually going, to, going be to, empty. To, to be empty. You may or may not have your utilities. And so you got to decide what kind of food you get. You can send a whole bunch of meat to put in the freezer and the electricity get cut off. And then um, you, just you got get all you that food. So, 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 so there's a certain type of food. Now, you talk about your shelter. Uh, somebody could throw a rock and it comes through your window and hits you. So that means you probably going to do like you would do if a hurricane was coming and board your windows up. But you want to use uh, more than just a quarter inch sheet of plywood because... A bullet can come through a quarter inch sheet of plywood. So if you got a week to prepare, you might break the windows in with just a small place for you to be able to peek out so that you, you can see and a place for you to get your weapons out so that you can take care of anybody that's coming up. But all of that comes from, from yeah, what? Preparation. preparation. But that prep, what I just said was sounded different than some of what you said, and that came from what? Because I've had some training, which some knowledge, to, to, to know on a, a deeper level what we what I need to do to prepare for that type of an event. All right? Now, for us, we need training. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's why you think Paul told Timothy to study? Mm -hmm. All right? And, and we're going to find another reason why, why we need training when, when we get through down through the army. So we need to study the word of God so that we know how to prepare against the tactics of the devil. Now, you need to know what his tactics are. Mm -hmm. If the football players watch film, okay, 
if we're going to prepare, then we need to know how, to, if from the football term, we need to be able to watch the devil's film. Mm -hmm. If we're not going to watch the football, use football terms, then we need to study and find out what the tactics of the devil are so that we can recognize them when they come. I would submit that a problem that many of us Christians have to include your pastor is that we don't pay attention to what the devil's tactics are and he's up on us and having his way with us before we even realize what has happened. With my children, my boys, all right? Having been a boy for 50 some years, there's some tactics that they use that I understand because I use those same tactics. Now, their mama never used them because she's a girl. She's a woman. So she don't understand those tactics. When I see them coming, I cut it off. Boom. Bam. Mama think you being, I'm being too hard on them because leave my boys alone. All right? However, I understand I'm cutting it off because I recognize it before it gets to the fight, I cut it off because I saw it coming. What we as Christians need to be able to do is recognize we understand that we don't walk in the spiritual realm 100% of the time. We couldn't get what we need to get done during the day. We couldn't be husbands. We couldn't, you couldn't be wives. You couldn't be mothers. You couldn't be employees. You couldn't be friends if you was walking in the spirit 100% of the time. You wouldn't do anybody any good. So what we have to do then is we have to prepare ourselves and understand the tactics so that we can switch like that. When we see the devil coming, we see him coming, and then we prepare ourselves and get in the stand. So when he just comes, we're already standing to be able to resist. Again, unfortunately what most of us do, or a lot of us do, is he's already knocked us down before we realize it, and then we have to get up and try to take that stand, and then when we take the stand, we're not prepared because we don't have all the armor. We grab the quickest piece of spiritual armor then that we can get, which means then we haven't done what Paul said. We haven't prepared for it. So this preparation, what, what goes into this preparation? Time. Time. What else goes into it? Fasting. Some fasting. What else? Great. So prayer goes into it. What else goes into it? Study. Study. Yes. The word. God's the word. We gotta get, we have to read the word. Or we have to get into the word. You've heard me say it a hundred times, if I've said it one time, <laughs> is there's no excuse for our generation. None whatsoever. Those who went to 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 uh, uh, Mount Sinai last night, preacher talked about. The Ethiopian unit mm -hmm. on the way to Jerusalem, reading Isaiah. In that day, Philip did not have his own scroll. Mm -hmm. Ethiopian unit, black man, had his own scroll and was reading it. Mm -hmm. He was Ethiopian. He didn't. He he he. His 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 native language was was not Arabic or Hebrew. The scroll was written in Arabic or Hebrew. So he was able to read. Let me leave that on because I'm going to get messed up on that one. <laughs> but we have to read the word. I was trying to tell you something there. If y'all don't y'all didn't get what I was telling you. I was, I was telling you something. All right. But we have to read the word. We have to. We have to listen to it on CD, DVD, MP3. It doesn't matter. But YouTube, whatever, but you've got to get the word in. Even having the word on at night for you to go to sleep, it's you're taking it in. Now, you're not going to become spiritually strong, strong by osmosis. <laughs> All right? Let me let me make that clear. You can't just you can't just cut it on when you sleep at night and think that that's all you need. <laughs> that 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 feeds your subconscious. But you need this in your conscious mind. All right? But that's better than listening to something else because you're feeding your subconscious then the word of God. And if you feed your subconscious the word of God, then if you get into a spiritual battle in your sleep, you already got the word of God there to... Well, y'all not listening. I got the word of God right there to fight already for you. All right? So that preparation that takes in some prayer, takes in some fasting, it takes in some study. What you're doing right now is part of that preparation in the Bible study. 
reading your word, getting into your word, and asking God to reveal the word to you, and then applying the word. Because you can read the word like you read a sci-fi sci novel and never apply it, and that won't do you a bit of good. All right? But you have to be able to apply it. So taking in that word is a big part of preparation. So he says, having prepared everything to take your stand. So preparing everything means we put the armor on, and we, we haven't talked about how to put it on yet. We're going to go in there in a few minutes. It means having put the armor on, having done your praying, having done your fasting when God tells you to fast, having studied and, and deposited enough word in you that when you take your stand, that when the word needs to come out of you, it can. And we're going to find that, that, that while you're standing there, you're not just standing there glazing. When you stand there, you have to be able to regurgitate the word that you have taken in. Problem with that is, it's like the bank. When when you stand in there and you put out that check, that 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 that's supposed to be regurgitation, but you haven't put nothing in, you're gonna get an NFS, non-sufficient fund. All right. So if you've only taken in Jesus wept, and the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. At any beginning, God created the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Same was in the beginning. If that's all you know, the devil's going to say, <laughs> that was nice. But he's going to come with you with something that that's not going to help you with. Are you following me tonight? Okay, and so this is where we have to prepare. So your preparation doesn't just stop here. It means that you're always in a constant state of preparation. So don't get the idea that you can always, you can be prepared 100% full. You are always in a state of preparation and training. You understand that? Now, I'm going to pause for a moment because I need to tell you something before I get too excited. If it hasn't already started happening to you, being in this course... It's going to open up some spiritual doors that the devil's going to come because he don't want you to be here. He don't want you to get the information that you're going to get. So he gonna, he'll throw everything that he can to keep you from getting it, get you distracted. So you need to be prepared for that. All right? So you say, well, well, we're going through this thing to get better. Well, unfortunately, they are going to get better. They get better in the spiritual realm. But normally what happens when things start to get better in the spiritual realm, they manifest themselves in a way that they look worse than the natural realm. Can I say that one more time? Y'all understand what I just said? Before things get better in the natural realm, what happens is when they get better in the, nat in the spiritual realm, they begin to look worse in the natural realm because it has to catch up. So expect the devil to come at you because he don't want you to get this. He don't want you to know what his tactics are because then you start to win and you don't even fight. How about that? You don't even fight and you start to win because you do what you're supposed to do. You stand. You have a good stance. You have a firm stance because the winds, spiritual winds, they're they going to push you. But you got a good stance. And then you know what to put out so that you resist it because you're not trying to fight it. In martial arts, one of the things uh, when, 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 when I did study it is that, that you were taught you use the energy of your attack. You don't, you, you don't, you know, when we grow up, we think you want to get strong so you can punch hard. In the martial arts, it's, it's, it's not the force of your punch. You allow the energy of the other person to give you momentum and allow you to move them around the way that you need to move them around and protect yourself. All right? So if you're doing a flip, you're not using your energy to do it. You use their energy and your, your momentum. And so martial arts is not as old as God. God had that concept way before the martial arts picked it up. His concept was you stand firm. You learn about me. Know what to look for from the devil, and let me do the fight. You might get, you move a little bit, but I already won the battle, all right? And, 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 and if we can look at it from this perspective, this is not Bible, this is Moffat right here.
But if I see this, the way I see it in the spiritual realm is that, that the momentum that God has, you know, if, if, if he was to swing and hit the devil, the wind that went behind, the force from his, his hit and the contact is enough force just to knock me over. Y'all didn't get that. And so if I'm standing firm, God can do what he has to do with the devil. And although I might bend, somebody say, I'm not going to break. Like a tree planted by the water. It may bend all the way to the ground, but it's going to spring back. And don't be in the way when it springs back up. All right? So he says, be prepared everything to take your stand. Therefore, he says, with truth. Now notice what this says. The word light, what does that mean? He says, truth like a belt around your waist. It will hold you up. You said the word what? Light. The word light. It's an assembly. It's an assembly. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means, it means truth is, uh, has relation to a belt in the context of what he's saying. Okay. So the belt, what does the belt do? Okay, so for the military folks, what is the, the, the belt that the military gave you do? Because he's talking about a soldier belt, right? He, he not talking about the one that holds the pants on. He's talking about that soldier belt. What's that that belt that belt do? It holds some utilities, whatever. Preparation. Gives you some support. Got your canteens and your water. It's, 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 your, your, your canteen, your water, your bullets. So so it, it carries some of the things that you're going to need, some utilities, but it also gives you support. All right? It also gives you a little bit of protection. All right? A little bit of protection. So so truth, and we're going to go back and we're going to look at each one of these in a few minutes. But he says, like that belt that gives you support, listen, listen to what it said. Because he said we need to stand firm, right? Mm -hmm. So in that preparation of standing, what he's saying is what gives you support in your spiritual stand is what? Truth. Truth. Not the belt. Truth gives you that support. It gives you support like a belt. So that's not, we, we don't want to get, get caught up on the actual armor. He says your belt, what gives you support, what gives you your utilities or, or, or carries or holds your utilities is truth. Now, we have to be able to define what truth is, and we're going to go to that in a few minutes. So he says, like a belt around your waist. What, is the, what does the, the belt do? It gives you what? Support. support. What gives us support in the spiritual room? Truth. truth. So truth is going to give us our support. He says, righteousness like armor on your chest. Now, I like this because he's telling you this is what it's like. So it's not the armor, but it's like what armor does. So righteousness does what? covers my chest and my heart. Why is the chest protected? Why, why do you need armor over the chest? Because you're taught to aim. My vital organs are there. You're taught to aim center mass when you try to kill someone. Military, we're taught to aim center mass. All right? Unless you're a sniper and, and you're using a special weapon and you don't even get, you're not even seen. But in close battle, you're taught to aim center mass. That's, that armor is to protect your center mass, and in that center mass is your heart. Okay? And so, if righteousness is covering our heart, and the spiritual room is covering our spiritual heart, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth. Say, say, let's speak. Yeah, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so when, when we say from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, we're not talking about that thing that goes boom, 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 All right, we're talking about our spiritual heart. That's the soul, our, 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 that's, that's the essence of who we are. Because when our natural heart stops, our spiritual heart is still living. Our spiritual heart doesn't die. Okay? And so what he's saying is righteousness. Now, what is righteousness? Because what he said, what protects, what protects your spiritual heart is righteousness. Truth is giving you support to stand, but righteousness protects your heart. What's righteousness? God established. God established. 
Okay? We'll go, we'll, we're going to come back to what righteousness is in, 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 in a few minutes. And your feet sandaled. Now, this is crazy because if you look at the armor and you, if you look back in that time, you know, no warrior now, no soldier is going to wear open toed shoes. All right? But in that day, they wore sandals. So their feet was open. You know, and if you want to, uh, really, if, 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 if you're from the street, when, when you know that they ain't even send a mask, first thing you do, you, you hit their feet <laughs> to, to get them off because that's open. That's the closest thing to get. And then you can do what you want to do after you've done it because that's an honorable <laughs> area. All right? But it says just your, your, your sandals, your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of what? Peace. So the sandals then had spikes in them so that you could, you could get a grip into the ground. But he says, and, and, and look at this, the sandals on your feet with the readiness for the gospel of peace. Now what's the gospel of peace? Christ. Christ. Anybody else? What's the word? God's word. The Bible. The word. Well, if... In, in, in a way, we say God's word, but we haven't got to the sword yet, right? Which we know is the word. Is the word. <laughs> it says, the word is sharper than any two-edged sword, pinching into the sunder of the marrow. The marrow of the bone. So, 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 a part we we gonna, we gonna define more what that gospel of peace is, because. When we think about that, the gospel of peace, when we realize that, will there ever be world peace? Okay, so when we, we've talked about that. When we pray for world peace, that's a, a few prayer because the Bible already tells us that we, there's not going to be world peace. So then we have to understand when we say the gospel of peace, what we're talking about. When I talk about everybody's going to get along, that's not, that's, that's not going to happen. All right? In every situation, take the shield. How many situations? Yeah. It says, in every situation, take the shield of faith. We're doing the, the, the study on faith, uh, uh, the series on faith on Sunday. So what is faith? What is faith? I mean, last three Sundays, we've given the definition for, 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 for belief. For trust and for faith. At least I think I have. I, I pretty, I'm pretty sure I have. So what you're telling me is that I'm not effective? No. I'm not effective. I help you out believe. Trust and believe. What is that action? Say, say that again. I got the two of them. They got it. Say it. Faith. We, we want. What do you want? Faith. 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 Combination of trust and belief. Put in there. Faith. faith is the combination of trust and belief put in the action. If that becomes our shield, but we can't. Right, right now, the time frame it took us to get that definition, and you said, "Well, Rabbi, I knew what it was. That just couldn't say it." <laughs> That was my answer. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I remember that now. <laughs> the reason that doesn't suffice is when we look at Jesus going toe to toe with the devil, what he had to do was, he, was and what he did to give us an example of what we have to do, because he could have just, he didn't have to speak. And he could have disintegrated the devil, the devil. But that's not his, it wasn't his time. And so what he did was he gave an example for what we're supposed to do, which was to utilize the word. Every time the devil attacked him, he resisted with the word. The devil attacked him with something to do. What he did was he resisted him with the word. And so we need to know that. Faith then is me putting my belief and my trust in God into action. Okay? We're going to talk Sunday about trust. You can't trust yourself. Even though you may want to. I don't care how long you've been married. 
You can't always trust your spouse. I don't care how good your children are. You can't always trust your children. Again, if you can't trust yourself, then that tells you how can you expect more from somebody else than you can even expect from yourself. Alright? And, 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 and I'm not going to preach Sunday sermon, but I'm going to show you how you can't trust yourself Sunday. Alright? And so, belief in God and trust in God because God is the only person that we can trust because he does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And since he does not change, he can be trusted. Since he does not lie, he can be trusted. Since he is righteous, he can be trusted. Since he is love, he can be trusted. So our, our faith then is us putting our belief and our trust in God in action. When we put that in action, then we don't try to do it ourselves. All right? We don't try to do it ourselves. And so if we're going to put it in action, then that means we can be able to speak the word. So that's why I know what, I know what you were talking about it doesn't work. You have to know what it is so that you can put it there and then you have to have the word. Okay? So he says, in every situation, take the shield of faith and with it, you will be able to... The shield of faith is going to enable us to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. The flaming arrows. Okay, we've read that, right? I'm sure everybody here has read this more than one time. However, when we get a picture of a of, of battle with Satan... It gets taunted with our worldview picture of what battle looks like. Right? Am I? And, and so you, you look at the war in Afghanistan, you look at, at, at the war in Iraq, you look at war that you see, the civil wars and, and the world 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 war one, world war two. We we look at these wars that we have seen, and that's the picture that we get. Of when the devil comes, Paul is saying, first of all, I don't know if you picked this up or not. If he's shooting flaming arrows at us, and you can put a shield up to extinguish the arrow, it didn't say it broke the arrow. It didn't say the arrow didn't penetrate. It said it extinguishes the arrow. Then that says then that the enemy has to be at some distance away. Am I right? Or did I just pick that up? Am I reading too much into it? Okay. Am I, am I reading too much into it? If he's, if he's shooting arrows... It means he's at some distance. Now, what's the purpose of a flaming arrow? Anybody remember the Cowboys and Indians? Remember the Cowboys had guns? Indians had arrows? But the Indians would uh, dip that, put something on the front of it, dip it in something flammable, flammable, light it on fire, and they didn't even aim at them. They didn't aim at, at the Cowboys. They aimed at the, the, the covered so wagon. Why? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why did they do that? Because they get destroyed. destroyed. Yeah. Well, was it? To destroy it. Yeah, they get destroyed. Well, they're they trying to destroy the wagon? That's right. Yeah. 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 They're, 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 they're preparation. Yeah. Okay, that's one thing. Yeah. But if you put, if you you put the, the wagon, wagon, wagon on fire, the fire yeah. what's the Cowboys going to do? Get Try to put the fire out. Don't get off with it. Don't stop. Yeah. Don't get so, so it said that their strategy wasn't direct, direct at the cowboy. It was an indirect. Mm -hmm. So, 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 if see y'all, I'm, I'm happy. Y'all not, y'all, not as happy as I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have an angel that's protecting you, that means that the devil can't come direct directly straight at you. The quarterback 
and I'm using because Tony's Tony's a football well, fanatic. So the book is going to be he's going to use a lot of football analogies. In order to get to the quarterback, what does the the the, the defense? I mean, the offensive guys on the other team have to do? And block. And block. Okay. No, the other team has offensive guys that are going after the quarterback. What do they have to do? They got offensive guys. Defense. Defense. The 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 defense. No, 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 no. Miss, y'all missing what I'm saying. You missing what I'm asking. Okay, we won't make the, the 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 offense is the team that has the quarterback. Right, right, right. right. And, and their job is to protect the quarterback. And, and their job is not only to protect the quarterback, but their job is to go on the offense and get a touchdown, right? Yeah. Either whether they do a run or whether they throw it and catch a pass, right? Now the defense's job is to prevent the offense from scoring. from scoring. All right. Mm -hmm. A part of that defense is to go after the quarterback. The quarterback. Yes, sir. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do they get to him? They knock down the offensive line. Bring it up. Huh? Which, which means that there's some folks who's on the offense who are really on the defense to keep the other team from getting who to the quarterback. We call the defense, but they're offensive at going toward getting to that quarterback and keeping him from throwing that ball, right? Mm -hmm. All right? But they can't get straight at the quarterback, can they? Mm -hmm. They got to come through that line. Mm -hmm. Right. Definitely got to come through that line. I'll go around the line. Now, now that you made me spin.